These are the most emotional moments in NFL history. And let's start with Pat McAfee, because back in 2013, during a Colts home game, McAfee went all out by surprising a military family with their brand new Toyota SUV. But as things seemed like they couldn't get any better, out walks their dad who came back from Afghanistan. What a magical moment. Let's talk about an emotional moment that all Vikings fans will never forget. Because on January 14th, 2018, it seemed over for the Vikings. Trailing by one with seconds remaining in a playoff game against the Saints, the Vikings needed a miracle. And while that didn't happen, something pretty exciting did. Since Marcus Williams made one of the biggest mistakes in NFL history by going for the ball rather than the tackle on what should have been a game-winning tackle. Instead, Stefan Diggs caught the ball and never looked back. As a Vikings fan, it doesn't get better than that. But now, let's move on to a moment that only happened weeks ago. Because during the first game of the 2022 NFL season, Isaiah McKenzie had a surprise that no one saw coming. Not even his pregnant sister. Since after scoring a touchdown midway through the third quarter, McKenzie celebrated by looking straight into the camera and yelling, Big man spike. It's a ball! And Buffalo's... <laughs> McKenzie is a legend for doing this for his sister. That being said, what Tory Smith did for his brother on September 23rd, 2012, is unforgettable. You see, hours before a week three matchup between the Ravens and the Patriots, Tory's brother, Tevin Smith, tragically passed away in a motorcycle accident. So this left Smith with a decision that no man should ever have to make. Do what he loves the most, or cope with his brother's death. Yet, somehow, Smith did both. Since Smith played the best football of his life while dedicating the performance to his brother. On that fateful night, Smith caught six catches for 127 yards and made two touchdowns in a thrilling 31-30 victory against the Patriots. What an emotional night for Smith and his family. Yet somehow, this isn't even the most emotional moment, since the sudden death of John Madden hit people in unexpected ways. On December 28th, 2021, the NFL world lost a legend and an icon. From making the Hall of Fame as a coach and being the face of the beloved video game franchise with his namesake, Madden, to earning 16 sports Emmy awards for color commentating, Football would simply not be the same without John Madden. Take the words of Commissioner Roger Goodell. Nobody loved football more than Coach. He was football. He was an incredible sounding board to me and so many others. There will never be another John Madden. Dang, that's high praise. At least John Madden can rest in peace knowing he made a difference. But now... Let's talk about what happened to Shaquem Griffin. Because the odds were stacked against Griffin from the day he was born. You see, Griffin was born with amniotic band syndrome, which prevented the fingers on his left hand from fully developing. And the pain from this syndrome was so unbearable that at four years old, Griffin grabbed a butcher knife to try to cut his own hand off. So the next day, his mother took him to get his left arm amputated. From there, the rest was history, since Griffin proved to be just as good with one arm as most people are with two arms. Because this dude was so good at football that he got drafted into the NFL. And to make matters better, he got drafted to the same team as his twin brother Shaquille, the Seattle Seahawks. However, not all stories have fairy tale endings. For instance, let's look at Sean Taylor's story. It's truly heartbreaking. Although at first, it seemed like Taylor was destined for the storybook ending we all dream of. Because by 2006, Taylor's life was great on and off the field. From making his first Pro Bowl with the Redskins to living happily with his fiancée and newly born daughter, Taylor appeared to have life figured out. However, 
This proved to not be the case, because apparently, there's such a thing as being too generous. Since Sean Taylor gave all of his close relatives keys to the house, living a carefree life and giving money to whoever needed it. Unfortunately, this carelessness caused four burglars whom Taylor knew to sneak into his house and break into his safe with rifles. Upon hearing noises, Taylor investigated the situation, only to be shot in the upper leg. Rapidly losing blood, Taylor survived less than 24 hours after the fact, dying on November 18th, 2007. While the league grieved the loss, they honored him by placing a number 21 decal on the back of all helmets during week 13. On top of this, the Redskins unveiled a banner with his name and number on it while establishing a trust fund for his daughter Jackie, among other kind gestures. The NFL definitely has a soft heart for situations like this. But now, let's transition to a more positive story about Kurt Warner. Because making it to the NFL isn't easy. And you better believe, Warner learned this the hard way. After going undrafted in the 1994 NFL Draft, Warner was signed by the Packers, only to be cut a few days later. From there, he found himself making five and a half dollars an hour while working as a grocery store bagger. As humbling as this situation is, Warner never lost hope, and was eventually signed by the Rams in 1998. Then, one year later, Warner was entrusted into the starting lineup. Once starting quarterback Trent Green suffered a season-ending injury. With the offense in his control, he never looked back. That very same year, Warner earned MVP honors and had a legendary Super Bowl performance, where the Rams won 23-16. Hard work really does pay off. But before we move on, I'm giving $100 to someone who subscribes in the next seven days. So what are you doing? Subscribe right now! Now this brings us to Tom Brady, as right before Super Bowl 51, a seven-year-old kid asked Tom Brady a question so wholesome, it made him cry. Many people say you're their hero, but who's your hero? Who's my hero? All right. That's a great question. Well, I think my dad is my hero, because he's someone that I look up to every day. And, uh, my dad. Brady couldn't help but get choked up thinking about his dad. Shout out to all the dads like Brady's. Meanwhile, I'd also like to give a shout out to the players at the 2020 NFL Pro Bowl. Since it's pretty easy to get caught up in the game, players sometimes lose sight of what's going on in the world. Although, this wasn't the case on January 26th, 2020. The world got news that Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gianna had died in a helicopter crash. And after losing such a basketball and global icon, the NFL players felt urged to honor him in whatever ways they could. So during the game, players did various basketball celebrations to give Kobe some love. This includes Devontae Adams who did a 360 dunk on the goalpost after a touchdown. Then, following the game, Lamar Jackson said this about Kobe. That's a legend. He did so much for the game of basketball. A lot of people look to Kobe, including myself. Meanwhile, most Raiders fans will never forget the passing of Al Davis on October 8th, 2011. Because up until Davis died, he was the heart and soul of the Raiders. Whether serving as the team's head coach, general manager, or part owner, Davis bled black and white. So fittingly, when Davis died, the Raiders were determined to get a win in his honor. Only this win didn't come easy. Leading by five with seconds in the game, the Texans were only five yards away from sending the Raiders home with a loss. However, the Raiders still came through after a Michael Huff game-sealing interception at the goal line. But what's even more emotional is the time Brian Robinson was carjacked and almost lost his life. And to hear more about that, click this video to see NFL players who were almost killed. 